this is MJ and in today's tutorial I'll be showing you how to make our bulky and quick rustic farmhouse pumpkin. This is one of my older patterns that you may have seen already on my channel but I've just done a pattern refresh and have included now six sizes in this pattern. So I'm going to work through one of the larger sizes with you. I'll be using an eight millimeter crochet hook for this pattern. This is a furl streamline cookie hook and there will be a coupon code with the link in the description box for where you can purchase those. And I'm also using Wool Ease Thick and Quick from Lion Brand. I love this yarn so much. So this yarn is not sponsored. I picked this yarn up myself, but I will link to places that you can purchase this in the description box. So this yarn is a super bulky number six and it's 80% acrylic, 20% wool. So it works up nice and thick and squishy, but you could also use two strands of worsted weight yarn held together and get a similar look. You're gonna need some twine and cinnamon sticks and also some fill for stuffing your pumpkin. So I've used Wool Ease Thick and Quick from Lion Brand to do the bulky and quick pumpkins, but you can follow the same pattern and make worsted weight pumpkins and they come out. So this is the small size pumpkin, which would be this size. And then if you do it in worsted weight yarn, you get a small pumpkin and I've wired them for a wreath and I will link the tutorial for the pumpkin wreath if you're interested in making something like that for, for your fall door. So this size here is the large pumpkin. So this is the large in super bulky and then this is the large pumpkin worked in worsted weight yarn. Including the multiple sizes in the pattern, you can stack your pumpkins to do some cute pumpkin stacks. So if you're thinking you may want to stack them, just don't glue in the cinnamon sticks and you can make your pumpkin stacks. So I'll be showing you how to make the large size pumpkin. Now we're just going to start off leaving a long tail and we'll use that to close up the bottom of the pumpkin. And then we'll chain out a total of 22. Now we're gonna work in the third chain from the hook, but we're gonna turn our work so that we can see the back humps and we're gonna work in those instead of the back loop of the chain. So one, two, three, turn and you'll see that hump. And we're gonna work half double crochets in each of the back humps across. So you should end up with 20 stitches in total. Okay, and then we'll chain two and turn our work. So now let's take a look at the stitches. The, th the half double crochet has a third loop. So if we turn our work like this, you're gonna see all of your stitches. And then you're gonna see this loop here underneath the stitch. This is the third loop of the half double crochet. So what we're gonna do to create this rib pattern is we're gonna be working into that loop, but we're gonna alternate working it in the front and working it in behind. So what we're gonna do is yarn over. I'm gonna go under the stitch. So I'm gonna go back to front and I'm pushing my hook down, grabbing that third loop. I'm gonna pull up a loop, yarn over, pulling through all three. So yarn over, go under the stitch from back to front, pushing the hook down and grabbing that third loop. Pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through three. And I'm going to work that all the way across and you're going to see it's going to push this stitch forward and that's what's going to create this beautiful ribbing. So 
So I'll work across, continuing with 20 stitches. And now I'll chain two and turn my work. So now let's look at the stitch again. So this stitch here is our stitch. So this is the front loop, back loop, and then you're seeing the third loop is popping out on this side. Okay, so always turn your work so you can see where the actual stitch is and then find that third loop of the stitch. Now this time we're gonna work under it, going from the front. So we'll yarn over, we'll go under the third loop, pulling up a loop, yarn over, pull through three. So this is the easier row. It's really easy to find that front loop or the third loop and work into it. So what this will do now is push that nice stitch to the front. Okay, so it's really easy to find that loop and that is what we're working into all the way across. Okay, so I've worked across 20 stitches, chain two and turn, and you just wanna make sure that you keep track of your stitch count so you don't lose or gain a stitch. So I've now completed three rows and you can see our two rows with these nice ridged stitches. So now we're back to the row two of the pattern. So again, we wanna take a look at where our stitch is and find that third loop, which is underneath. We'll yarn over, going back to front, pushing down, grabbing the third loop, pulling up a loop, and pulling through all three. Okay, and we'll continue that across. Okay, now we'll chain two and turn. Here is our stitch and there is the third loop. So now we're just repeating row three of the pattern and working half double crochets in the third loop, working it from the front side. So we're getting this nice flat texture along the back and then all of our ribbing to the front. Okay, and make sure you work across your 20, chain two and turn. So now I've completed a total of five rows. So when you look at your work, you're always gonna count these two ridges here as to two rows, so two, four. Plus we're gonna add the first row we started with. So we've worked a total of five. We're ending on that odd number row when we complete working our rectangle piece. So for the large size pattern, we're working a total of 27 rows. So you're just gonna repeat row two and three throughout until you have your 27 rows. So I'm gonna go ahead and work mine up off, off camera and then I'll meet you up when I have that complete. Okay, so it's gonna be normal that it's gonna really want to curve in. Because we're, sh we're shaping it into a pumpkin, that's fine, it's not a big deal. It should measure about 14 and a half. You may even, it might even be closer to 15 and a half, but if we don't stretch it out, it's about 14 and a half. And it's about nine and a half if we completely stretch and flatten it out. And the PDF pattern will include all of those sizes for your six sizes in total. Okay, so if we count by twos, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26. And the row we started with adds an extra, so we have a total of 27 rows. Now, what we're gonna do, this is a little bit different than my original pattern. I had right sides facing. But if you do wrong sides facing and slip stitch through each stitch, it actually blends really well with this pattern. So 
Okay, so there's the first stitch on that side. Because we worked in that back hump, it gives us that nice stitch to work through. And then what this will do is push these stitches forward, giving it the same ribbed look. So I'm just gonna work all the way across slip stitching this together. Okay, so once you've slip stitched that all the way across, let's just chain one and I'll show you how that looks. So you can see how well it blends in. And what we'll do now is take this long tail that we started with to close the bottom. Okay, so now if you look at the section here that's popping up, so sort of your ridged, the bump at the ridge section, but we're just going to take our yarn needle and go through. Okay, and now we can start pulling the pumpkin closed. And it's going to seem like it doesn't want to pull all the way, but as we do some additional weaving, that's going to close right in. So just take your yarn needle and just start weaving all the way around. Once you get that it's closed in, you can start weaving back in the opposite direction. Okay, and then we can just trim our tail. Okay, so next we can start stuffing it. This will be a fairly large pumpkin. I still have one size that goes even bigger. Now the smaller sizes, it would be fine to work around just the way we did this side. And honestly, you could even do that for the larger sizes too. It just takes a little bit of work to kind of get it all cinched in well. So what you can also do, so we've already chained one, is you can single crochet around. So I like to grab the parts that are sticking up. Okay, so I've worked around 14 stitches. We'll just slip stitch to join. And now you're gonna fasten off with a long tail. So I'm almost to the end because I did make one of the extra small size pumpkins with this ball of yarn already. So I was able to get this extra small and then the large pumpkin as well out of one ball of yarn. Okay, so now what we'll do is take our yarn needle and you're just gonna weave through the front loops 
only of every stitch around. So this is just another way to close the top. But both ways are fine. So if you decide to do it the same as the bottom, go right ahead. Okay, and you see how easy though that comes together when you've done the round of single crochet. So it should just close up really easily. Now I'm not going to worry about leaving an opening for the cinnamon sticks. You could do that. You could leave that there's a bit of an opening that you can stick that in. All I've done with these guys is I've glued them to the top and if you want to stack them, then you won't need to put your stick in some of your sizes. So I'm not going to do a lot of weaving because this is automatically going to cinch together when we start doing our indents. So to make our indents on our pumpkin, you can see that there are some the double crochet or the, the half double crochet rows. Some of them have like a little bit more of a gap. I want you to take your yarn needle and just weave it through. Now, if you used an even smaller hook than an eight, that might kind of alleviate a little bit of the gapping. But I find once you cinch them all together, it, it overall, like it doesn't look too bad, but you can notice that there is a little bit of gapping. So if that bothers you, just go down, work with a smaller hook, it might be a little bit more of a struggle to work with the smaller hook, but it will tighten up the stitches. So weave that through, then you're gonna take your yarn needle, you're gonna push it, and you need to push that needle up through the center. And then you're just gonna give it a pull. And that's gonna start pulling that and I'm just going to do every other one. You could even do every third. Maybe I'll do for the bigger pumpkins. The smaller pumpkins I did every other. Because this is a bigger pumpkin, I'm going to go with skipping two and then going to the next. So you just weave, find the spot that's really gappy and then it's a good spot to weave that down. Pull that up and this is why we need the long strand because we want to make sure that we can get around this pumpkin. It's one, two, three. So I am just going to continue this. I'm going to keep working my way around the pumpkin. Okay, and then I just like to kind of squish it and mold it a little bit, give it its shape. And then you can just weave in your tail. So now you can leave your pumpkin just like this if you're gonna stack it, or you can take cinnamon stick, tie some twine, and then just take your glue gun, tap some glue, and your pumpkin's finished. Or what I suggest doing for stacking is skipping sizes. So this is our large, so we're gonna skip the um, medium size and go down to the small. And then the XX small would then be a nice stack. So likewise here, we'll have 
our extra large pumpkin, the medium size, and then the extra small pumpkin for these stacks. So I just like to cut a piece of twine. You can take your cinnamon stick and just make a bow. And then just take your glue gun and stick that. And if you find that your cinnamon stick is a little bit long, you can always cut them. You can cut them down. They will cut if you have a good pair of scissors. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel and tap the bell to stay updated on all my new videos and tutorials. If you go to the link in the description box, there will be a link to purchase the pattern with all six sizes and you also get the bonus pumpkin wreath tutorial as well included in that PDF. But there's also the free version on the blog and the link will be there in the description box as well. Thanks so much guys, have an awesome day.